Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pixel and in today's video, we're going to be learning how to create checkpoints. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up workspace and we're going to insert a folder. This folder is going to store all of our checkpoints. So we're going to name it checkpoints like this. And then we can go ahead and create our first checkpoint. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to insert a part. Make sure that it is anchored. And then I'm going to resize it so it's a square. And then I'm just going to give it a random color. I think an orange is a nice color. And then you're just going to name it one. And the way these checkpoints are going to work is it's going to go one all the way in ascending order of in numerical <laughs> ascending order. So the second one would be two. And then the third one will be three. And just so you know that it's working, I'm just going to change the color. So it's going to go yellow, red, and then blue. So one, two, three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert a script into our server script service. And this script is going to be called, let's just name it checkpoint handler. And this script is going to give us our not only our objectives or our checkpoint leader stats, but it's also going to um, basically put our character on the checkpoint every time we respawn or join the game. So what we're going to do is game not players dot player added connect function player. And so this function, it fires when a player joins the game. And then we're going to create a leader stats instance in or a variable, which is going to be a folder. And then we're going to put that inside of our player. And then this folder is going to be named leader stats like that. And then we're going to make another variable, which is going to be checkpoint. And this one's going to represent an int value and instead of putting this in the player, we're going to put it inside of our leader stats folder. Then we're going to name it checkpoint like that. And then what you want to do is make sure that our value is one. So we always start at one. And this is not a data store version. So this will not save. It will restart every time you join the game. Usually, um, depending on what obby you're doing, you might want this, but if you want to learn how to make this into a data store, I have a video out. The link will be in the description or in the top right corner if you guys want to check that out. Um, but we're going to now make it so that we spawn on top of our checkpoint. So we're going to do player.character added connect function character. This function fires when your character is added to the game or it means when you just join the game or when your character respawns. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, repeat wait until player dot character does not equal nil. So what this does is it repeat waits until our player dot character exists. So it just basically means until our character exists, then we're going to define our checkpoint, which is going to be workspace dot checkpoints dot actually find first child checkpoint dot value. And what this is going to do is it's going to get the value of our checkpoint, which should be one and label a put this variable and it's going to find the first child based off this number. So if our number is one, then it's going to find checkpoint one. But again, this will fire every time you respawn and this might be two or three, which we'll get onto in a second. Um, and then all we have to do is just teleport the player. So character wait for child humanoid root part dot C frame equals C frame dot new checkpoint lowercase checkpoint make sure this is lowercase um, if you have it capitalized and it will be w focusing on this variable and we need a lowercase because this variable has a lowercase or you can just change it all together so you, there's no confusion but lowercase c checkpoint dot position plus vector three dot new um, open parentheses and then two close parentheses like that oops and then inside of the parentheses we're going to type zero comma two comma zero and what this is going to do is just give a space on top of the 
um, part and it'll put us on top instead of spawning us inside of the part. So after that, we should be able to join the game and it should spawn us on top of the yellow brick. As you can see, we're on the yellow brick, but um, it's not going to let us change our checkpoint, which we're going to do now. But let me just show you that if we reset our character, that we will also spawn on the yellow brick. All right, so now that we have done that, we can go ahead and stop, and then we can go ahead and create the um, checkpoint change script. All right, and then to do the checkpoints, we're just going to insert a script, and we're gonna name this touch handler, and we're only gonna need one variable for this, which is going to be checkpoint, and that is going to be script.parent. The parent of our script is checkpoints up here. And then we're going to create a for IV loop, which if you don't know, the I stands for the index or the number, basically, which, uh, wait, let me just finish typing this out. Um, the children, like that. Um, the I represents the index because get children um, returns a table of all these things. So the index of one is obviously going to be one and then two and then three. And that's how that works. Um, and then V actually represents this object. So V dot name would be one or and then two and then three, depending on what was going to loop through. So it's going to do this for every single part. Uh, all we need to do is detect if V is a base part first before we move on. Um, base part just means if it's a part because we also have a script in here and you cannot touch a script. So, um, it'll just error if we try to do that. So we're going to do, if it's a base part, then v.touched connect function hit. And then this is just an ordinary touched function. Um, I think I already made a video going over this, but our parameter hit represents the object that hit our part. So in that case, it could be the leg or the torso or the arm or the humanoid root part. But, um, depending on what it is, we're still going to detect if the parent of that, which is our player's character, at least it should be, we're going to detect um, a humanoid. And a humanoid is in all Roblox players or characters. If the humanoid does not exist, that means it's not a Roblox character and we're not gonna continue with um, our code. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable for our player. So game not players get player from character hit dot parent. And what this does is in here, our argument needs to be a character um, and then, or a parameter. Yes, our parameter has to be a character and then we're getting the player from the character. And then just to make sure that the player exists in case, you know, the player leaves or something. Uh, if player, then if player dot leader stats dot checkpoint dot value is less than two number parentheses v dot name inside then and what this does is if our value of our checkpoint is less than the checkpoint we're on or we're touching then it's going to allow us to change it if not then it won't so that means you cannot um, go backwards you only can go forward on the checkpoints so then what we're going to do is we're going to do player dot leader stats dot checkpoint dot value equals to number v dot name just like that and that should be everything for this tutorial if we go ahead and test our game you can go over to the test tab and hit test um, we should be on checkpoint one then we should be able to be on checkpoint two just quickly i'll make sure that you cannot step on this and then we can move over to checkpoint three and then if we go ahead and reset we should respawn on checkpoint three all right, so it worked. So that is everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing. This is me signing off, and as always, keep on scripting.